the Sunday School, as you can see from the program. And some of you have asked us about the title of his performance, the title of his teaching demonstration. It's all a mystery to all of us, but we expect that we're going to learn an awful lot about what he has to say. Uh, as you know, the teaching demonstrations are designed so that we can watch our peers who are in another department and we can learn from the kinds of things that they do in their department. And perhaps we'll be able to incorporate some of those things into our own teaching. After the performance, it's our, our, uh, our trend to uh, ask you what you got out of the performance, what can you take away from it, what do you think you might use later. So uh, the, the other two ACLE directors, Steve Edison and David McAlpine will be leading you through that section. So thank you, Dr. Hill, for coming here today and look forward to hearing what you have to say. Thank you very much. Oh, please wait till you hear it <laughs> before you decide. This is really uh, um, a terrific honor for me to be here uh, to, to, to do this today. Um, I have a long history with this university, um, and um, uh, proud, used to be embarrassed, but now I'm a grandfather, so I'm proud to tell you that uh, uh, 29 of my, of my 54 years have been spent on this campus. Uh, I was an undergraduate student here starting in 1973. I uh, walked onto this campus in my uh, uh, platform shoes, <laughs> my, my, my plaid bell-bottom pants, my Dodge shirt with my sharp tooth uh, little pendants, and uh, I was hip, <laughs> which was sad, just to go back and think about it. Um, from the very beginning, from the time I was a freshman, uh, and this was meaningful to me because I walked onto this campus with my nerd pack on high. Uh, from the time I walked on this campus, uh, we were very proud of, um, of the fact that we had more tenure-track PhD faculty teaching core courses on this campus than anywhere else in the, in the state, and it was true. And mainly because we didn't have graduate programs, so you didn't have graduate <laughs> assistants to do that for you. But every student on this campus had the opportunity to sit in the classroom with somebody who had just gotten out of a doctoral program and understood the cutting edge ideas of whatever topics that they were sharing with their students. And for somebody like me, that was exhilarating. For somebody like me, it was inspiring enough that I decided this is what I want to do as a career. Uh, and for all the years that I was on this campus, and I didn't realize we had such trouble in the department when I was chair. <laughs> <laughs> News to me. Uh, I know I, I appreciate Carol's comments about that. But all the years on this campus, that, that's the one aspect. And I always got so tired of hearing people say UALR didn't have any tradition, because we do. Uh, and that's one of them. And one of the traditions is the, is the emphasis and the effort that we put into selecting outstanding teachers to join us on our faculty to teach our students. And, and, it, and so it is especially uh, a proud moment for me to come back and this effort that Carol and others have, have worked on to continue this em emphasis on, on teaching and the importance of quality of teaching is something that, that got me into this, into this career to begin with. And so it's just a real pleasure to be here uh, to do this for you today. I hope you find what I have to say interesting. And I was asked to give a lecture, so that's what I'm going to do. This is a lecture that I gave pretty much uh, a truncated version that you're hearing today on a particular approach to communication that we take at the Clinton School that um, was also something that I was getting into right before I left the university. Uh, but it's a long-standing idea in the area of communication that re helps us to reframe the way in which we view the interactions that we have with other people. And it's critical for us at the Clinton School because ours is a unique program that puts students in the field immediately. And we approach public service from a very engaged perspective. Uh, and I should stop right here and warn you that at one point during the lecture today, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flip you off. So just be prepared for that. And, uh, don't, and don't be shocked when I do, OK? Because uh, it's all about a teaching point, trust me. Um, but we go, back to the, we go back to the Clinton School engagement approach. We look at public services in a very engaged uh, activity. So our mantra at the Clinton School is that public service is not something you do to somebody, it's something you engage them in, and that you must involve them in that process. And so um, the way in which we interact with folks, the way we communicate with them becomes critical uh, to managing that particular process. So the traditional theories of, of communication have, and I'm gonna try this from here. <laughs> it's not gonna work from here. Um, um, there we go. <coughs> 
So traditional, which means I have to walk back there to do this all the time, so let me stand back here. Uh, so traditional theories of communication have focused on messages as a commodity. And this would make sense to I think everybody in the room. Uh, that we look at the communication process as this sort of uh, mysterious, sometimes, exchange of ideas or thoughts or messages from one person to another to achieve some sort of effect uh, is kind of the way we look at it. We look through the communication process all the time. We look through the communication process to the outcome that gets generated by our interactions with other, interactions with other people. All right? So I tell a joke, you laugh. Uh, I emote, you cry. I, gave, I was teaching a class last week and I shared an example, um, the silliest little example, and I looked up and like five of my students were crying, which I think was a good thing. Uh, <laughs> I should probably think clear more clearly about what that example was before I, uh, anyways. Has anybody heard that? I hear a student cry. I, I mean, you know, I, well, we teach public speaking to freshmen in the speech department, so you see a lot of tears. Um, <laughs> I teach, you learn. I mean, there's the, there's the classic for all of us that are interested in teaching. And isn't it interesting how we sort of look at what, you know, what do I do as a teacher so that my students can learn? And, and we, so, we get so focused on that, um, that that we look through the process of communication, we look through the process of teaching to the outcome, instead of really focusing on what we're doing in the moment that's generating the ideas of learning that we might be participating in. Um, but it doesn't always work the way that we want it to work, and that's where I want to start with today, this communication process, this idea of communication as a, a commodity perspective, this message that we share with other people. Uh, I always tell people all the time that if everybody else would just see the world the way I do, my life would be a whole lot easier, all right? Uh, but it doesn't work that way. The outcomes that we want, rarely do we get. Uh, and so um, I thought you might enjoy a couple of, of examples of this. This is an example from Roger Brown and Ursula Belugi discussing problems with experiments on young children. Uh, they're doing a research study in which they're trying to, to determine the, when students, uh, when children get quantitative awareness and spatial awareness. <laughs> the interviewer, now Adam, listen to what I say. Tell me which is better, A water or some water? Adam, pop go weasel. All right, so if you've ever been around a three-year-old, um, this is the way most of your conversations go with them, all right? Uh, obviously, the researchers are thinking of one thing, and the child is generating uh, something else. Um, Aristotle's view of rhetoric as this, this faculty of, of discovering the available means of persuasion. I love it. Who's, I'm like, I'm going to argue with Aristotle. <laughs> the available means of persuasion, as if there they are. <laughs> you know, there's the available means. Which one would you like to persuade others? And there's something, really, there's something very ancient Greek about that perspective, that in fact, there are those available means to us if we are a good enough character or we're well-educated enough that we can just access and then persuade others and help others discover the truth, if only it were, you know, if only it were that way. Um, and so with this perspective, it's easy for us to begin to see communication as something we do to somebody else. Uh, it's, and, 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 and we're trying to fight that particular perspective in others. Where you see this, uh, another good example of this, I bet something that we all did as youngsters is play the telephone game. You know, of, of where you pass one message from one person, you whisper it in their ear. And we, we look at how that message changed from, from person to person. Um, I found this cartoon a couple of months ago, um, which is great. Uh, we're, in a set, we're, in, we're in a recession, maybe it's a smart time to buy. Bye, bye, are you leaving? Uh, did she get fired? Layoffs, this is so depressing. Depression, we're in a depression. So, so, all right, so um, we've all, you know, we've all had these experiences of, of, of this kind of thing happening. Um, but here's the, the deal. What, so often what we do in these kinds of examples is we look at ter in terms of each person. Oh, look at how that person has changed this message. And as it moves from person to person, it's the way I always used to teach this idea to my students. As it moves from person to person, here's how this message changed as if it's this person's fault that they misunderstood the message. What happens to the commodity as it goes on? What I'm going to suggest is that perhaps what we ought to do is change our perspective instead of looking at this individual's responsibilities. What is it about the nature of the relationship among these people that creates this particular